Hi, I want to build an incredible sounding scale with you today that I almost guarantee you've never heard of. But there's a twist. The scale has a structural flaw embedded into the core of its construction, which makes stability nearly impossible. I wanna show you how this is both a good thing to be celebrated, as well as a way we can stabilize it using some truly mind-blowing scale smithing techniques brought to us from microtonal theory. Through this exploration, we'll become familiar with two different versions of the same scale and two pieces of music that represent completely different approaches to composition. Welcome to the world of 31 notes and today's subset, heptatonic new second seven. Let's start with chromatic 31. Each number along this circle represents a different possible pitch in 31 tone equal temperament, or as us microtonalists like to call it, 31 Edo. Each note moves up clockwise by the smallest step possible in 31, the diesis. This numbering system, by the way, is called Edo step. Edo step simply assigns these numbers to notes going up the chromatic 31 scale, starting from our root note, or one, up to our augmented seventh, or 30th degree. In 31, a C major chord, for example, is still spelled C E G, just like it is in 12. But now with Edo step, we can alternatively frame it as zero, 10, 18, starting on C. Since we have so many new notes in between our notes, it becomes increasingly more useful to think and present microtonal theory in in this way. Now, obviously we can do a lot in 31 that we can't do in 12 through Edo step, which brings us to today's topic, heptatonic new second. This is a seven note scale consisting mostly of a chain of neutral seconds. Wait, what's a neutral second you ask? Well, it's like a major second, but a little less or a minor second, but a little more. This interval clocks in at around 155 cents and is four diocese large. For reference, the minor second is three diocese large and the major second is five. You can think of the neutral second as being a diesis altered minor or major second. In 12 tenth theory, you can look at this as being a semitone plus a nearly symmetrical quarter tone. We'll need to stack quite a few of these to construct heptatonic new second. This quarter tonal alteration is why you might intuit a vaguely Middle Eastern flavor to this scale, but more on that in a new second. So let's build it out. We'll start at a root note, go up four diesis, up for more, rinse and repeat all the way up to our 24th degree, where we'll close the octave with a seven diesis jump, otherwise known as a sub minor or septimal third. All right, that sounds pretty interesting, but let's hear it in context with some actual music. All right, so now that we have a more clear picture of new second seven, where is that structural flaw that I mentioned earlier? Well, let's see if we can get there with a question. How many chords did you hear me use in that demonstration? Not many, I presume, but why? Because there aren't really any traditionally consonant ones that are native to this scale. Uh, let me explain. Say you wanted to build a minor chord within new second seven temperament. It's a minor-ish scale, so it shouldn't be too hard. The first two notes, our root and flat third, form a fairly pure minor third interval. However, when we try and add our fifth, 
it gets kinda sour. That's because a perfect fifth, which would be the 18th scale degree in 31, doesn't exist in new second. So we can't actually build stable minor or major triads. True sub minor and super major triads are also off the table because they all require that fifth. Now you can certainly get away with a dyadic approach where you're implying the fifth that's not really there, but you'd have to omit the third leg of the naturally occurring root position triad of new second seven to do it. And that's just trying to force this poor little scale to be something that it's not. The fifth is so sharp, in fact, that in all likelihood, your ear is probably hearing this interval as being closer to a minor sixth instead of a perfect fifth. But if that's the case, can't we just build off of the 20th degree here and at least pull some kind of major chord out of it? And yeah, maybe we can get a little closer to some kind of perceptually valid major-esque chord, but when we do this, we'll find that our quality defining note, the major third, is now stretched into a super major third quality. And the fifth, while being slightly closer to perfect, is still noticeably sharp, giving us this really off-kilter, wobbly sounding chord. There's really no way around this annoyingly unstable fifth. The fifth is extremely important to providing a sense of stability in Western music. In fact, the only familiar chords we can construct from this scale are diminished chords and their microtonal extensions, like the subminor diminished chord here, or a minor sesquiflat five here. Not the most stable chords in the chorale, so maybe with New Second Seven, a Western approach isn't necessarily the way to go. Rather than dancing from chord to chord, stacking notes within a vertical harmonic framework, we seem to be nudged by the very DNA of this subset towards an approach that favors a drone-centered composition style, a more modal approach. The quickest path to a sense of stability, therefore, at least for me, as I demonstrated a minute ago, is by pedaling consistently off of our root note, which gives us the space to focus on expression through ornament rather than polyphony. But what if we wanted to take that harmony first approach and do some more complex polyphony, more in line with a Western expectation of consonance and dissonance? For that, we're gonna need to look into subset expansion. This is exactly what we did in our last microtonal theory video, by the way, where we iterated tetratonic Orwell into nonatonic Orwell in order to pull out some really unique colors from the temperament. So if you're interested in that, check that video out after this one. Going up the scale ladder, we can see that octatonic new second essentially just adds a new node point onto our second quadrant of our circle here. And while that eighth note gives us a sense of visual symmetry here, it doesn't really do much to ground the actual sound of the scale in a way that feels traditionally stable. We're looking for fifths here after all, not major sevenths. Pentadecatonic new second, a 15 note expansion of the scale, breaks up our neutral seconds into this diesis plus minor second structure. But even then, it narrowly misses the perfect fifth here, opting for a neutral fifth instead. <laughs> A neat sound, perhaps, maybe a little less spicy than its neighbor, the Wolf Fifth, that some of you quarter comma mean tone practitioners out there will be familiar with, but it's still not pure enough for our purposes. We could do some clever reframing and transform our pentadecatonic structure by spinning it around until we reroute ourselves on the scale's seventh mode, but <laughs> As ironic as this is gonna sound, I would really prefer to keep things simple. So our only other option is this scale, which bears the absolutely ridiculous name of Icocitratonic New Second, or New Second 23. This is the ultimate 23 note expansion of New Second Temperament, a hyper chromatic scale, if you will. Seriously, just listen to the lunacy. Only when we subdivide the neutral second chain as a 1-1-2 one, one, pattern are we able to pull a perfect fifth out of this temperament. But this is just too crazy, right? I mean, how are we gonna actually use a scale this big? Well, we're not, we're gonna hack it. Or rather, we're gonna fuse these two subsets 
together. If we borrow this subdivision grouping from this section of new second 23 and graft it onto new second seven, we can enjoy all the tonal benefits inherent deep in this temperament while also pulling in some of that stability that allows us to build out some really cool tonal harmony aligned with our goal. Now that we have a stabilized version of the scale, let's listen to what that perfect fifth gets us in the context of a more vertical approach to harmony. Earlier, I hinted that New Second is reminiscent of some of the sounds you might hear in Middle Eastern music. That's because of that neutral second interval that builds out the scale. There are a ton of neutral seconds and quarter tones in Middle Eastern music. The first three notes of New Second roughly correspond to the first three notes in what Arabic music calls bayati, Turkish music calls ushak, and Persian music calls shur. When we add the fourth note of new second, a diminished fifth away from our root, we arrive something close to the Turkish version of the Saba tetrachord. Tetrachords, or jinns as they are commonly called in the Middle East, are a series of four notes that in Arabic and Turkish traditions make up part of a maqam. A maqam is essentially a guide to compositional structure. Some theorists will argue that the maqam is the root to the melodic side of all Turkish music. Some will argue that it's the tetrachord and others will argue that it comes from somewhere else entirely. What no one argues is that the maqam and the tetrachord are extremely important to these styles of music. You'll hear a lot of people, particularly in the West, refer to maqams as an Eastern equivalent to scales or maybe modes. This is an inadequate analog. Macombs are not scales, and making the comparison really just takes us further away from understanding what they actually are. And hang on for a minute, I know we've taken quite a detour, but I'm gonna loop it back around in a second here. If I asked you to convey the idea of major to me, you'd probably play me a major chord, take C major. You'd play your root C, your fifth G, and then your quality defining note E, giving me a sense of a major tonality. Now, if I asked you to express the idea of major again, only this time you couldn't use any chords, only melody, well, then you'd start to appreciate pretty quickly the tetrachordal approach that helps define Eastern thought when it comes to composition. I am by no means an expert in Macomb theory, by the way, so I'm not gonna speak too deeply onto this, but I've linked a bunch of creators who are actually experts in Middle Eastern music theory down below. Check them out if you wanna get a more complete picture of what I'm discussing here. That said, I think a comparison between Eastern thought and Western thought can be really helpful in helping us understand a microtonal perspective here and maybe provide some guidance on the best ways we can go about using both versions of this scale. Western musicians tend to approach music with a vertical mindset. That is, what notes can I stack on other notes in time to evoke a specific feeling? It's expression through group polyphony. Triadic harmony is the bedrock of Western music. Eastern musicians, by contrast, tend to approach music with a horizontal mindset. That is, individual melody is paramount. What articulations and ornamentations and inflections can I do to the melody to evoke a specific feeling? It's expression through group heterophony. Here are two versions of the same melody. One will be an Eastern approach and one will be a Western approach. Now, 
it's the internet, so let me layer in some unfortunately needed nuance here. I'm not saying that Eastern musicians don't use chords, and I'm not saying that Western musicians don't know what a hammer-on is. Obviously, that's ludicrous. What I am saying is that one framework prioritizes a vertical harmonic approach with horizontal considerations being secondary, and the other prioritizes a horizontal modal approach with vertical considerations being secondary. Each of these frameworks produce two distinctly different types of music, both with the goal of getting us to feel things. They just use two different methods of getting us there. Neither is better or worse, just different. Saba Makam is made up largely of two stacked tetrachords, Jin Saba and Jin Sejaz. You'll notice that they overlap. In Saba, it's common to tonicize the third degree as a kind of essential stopping point within the Makam's melodic progression. Again, you may be tempted to look at this like it's some kind of third mode of this Makam, but that's really not the case as the finalis or ending note is almost always on the first note here. Because of their tetrachordal structure and how they overlap, there is a strong sense of tonal gravity on both the first and third note. As you're probably starting to realize, macams are very different from scales in a number of ways. And while heptatonic new second does approximate some of the first tetrachord, it doesn't quite get it right. Turkish intervals will adjust themselves, either sharpening or flattening, depending on the tonal gravity, melodic trajectory, or aesthetic of the macam at hand. Even with this consideration, our second tetrachord, Jin Sejaz, diverges quite drastically from New Second Seven. This makes a lot of sense. The notes in these two systems, while similar at first glance, are derived in two completely different ways from each other, from two completely different schools of thought. Yet, since they share a perceptual aesthetic, one will inevitably be confused for the other. New Second is difficult. It's challenging to make it work because it lives in the space between both of these worlds, both physically in the notes that it represents, but also conceptually in the approach that it suggests. But that's also what makes it so interesting. It's, it's not really an Eastern scale, but it's also a scale that, unless you're really unlucky, you're never gonna find on a piano. If you've never taken the time to investigate your own compositional intuitions or foundations, New Second has a really funny way of making you do that. And therein lies the lesson. When faced with difficulty, always remember that you have two options. Change the rules or change your perception. Okay, so would you like to try out heptatonic new second, altered new second, even maybe icocitratonic new second yourself at home? Well, I have a solution for you. I've just digitized all of these temperaments into tuning files that you can just drop into your synth at home. All of this plus an exclusive microtonal lecture series will be available to you when you sign up under the microtonalist tier on my Patreon. It's how I keep this channel running. It's how I'm able to explore some of these crazy music theory ideas. And it's how you can show support to this deeply weird, but deeply beautiful community of microtonal music theory nerds. We await you with open arms and of course, a whole lot of notes. <laughs>